Okay, I'm sure some of you clicked the title just to be mad at me. That's legit. And some of you are not going to like what I say in the first chunk of this video, but I swear if you hear me out through the dumb complaining part, you might just like what you hear when we try and fix this. Just try to hold off on the angry comments until after the whole video, okay? Hot take time. Resurrection in D&D 5e is bad. It's a bad spell. It is mechanically kind of dumb and narratively unsatisfying. It is bad. Sorry, not it, they, as there are multiple spells to reverse death. Resurrection may be the worst offender, but they are all kind of bad. Let me explain myself. Revivify. R Revivify? Whatever. So, if a target has been dead less than a minute, make them not dead at the cost of a 300 gold diamond. I have the fewest problems with this one as it feels like a last minute triage before the person is like dead dead. The defibrillators of the fantasy world. I think it's kind of wild how many classes get this, clerics at friggin level 5, but I suppose it could be worse. Raise dead. Target has to be dead less than 10 days, won't regain lost limbs or vital organs, so if they're missing something important, you can't raise them. And a 500 gold diamond. Yeah. I do like the vital organ stipulation, and it is a 5th level spell, so I guess it could be worse, but also why do bards get this? Strum diddy dum, come back to life! Whatever, the raised person gets a temporary penalty that a few naps fixes because death isn't that big of a deal, I guess. Not good. Reinc- <laughs> Reincarnation! <laughs> I hate this one. Target must be dead less than 10 days, you only need a chunk of the body, 1,000 gold worth of extra virgin olive oil, and an hour of chanting and wiggle fingers. But they come back as a different race! One of these races specifically, or whatever the GM chooses, I guess. What is this? Like, I know it's taking from the actual idea of reincarnation from the player's handbook for Earth, but that's like you die and your soul is reborn anew in the world. Why would magic in D&D bring you back as an adult of the same age with the same memories and be like, but this time you're a half-orc? What? This literally only exists because it's amusing in a meta sense. Seriously, in the context of the actual worlds of D&D and of their magic, this is kind of buck wild. At least only druids seem to have access to this Willy Wonka of a spell. Resurrection. 7 level spell, 1000 gold diamond, and dead less than a century. Restores you completely except for magical whoozy what's -its. The resurrected party needs a few naps to shrug off a penalty, and the caster needs a single nap if the person was dead longer than a year. So, at level 13, you can bring someone back from the dead. You can literally reverse death no matter the wounds they took into their original uninjured body. And all it takes is a rock that costs as much as a friggin' plus one weapon and maybe a Pedialyte break. And true resurrection is hardly any better. It just costs 25 times as much, but you don't need a body at all, and it gets rid of all magic ailments as well. I guess the price is a little better. Also, clerics and druids get true resurrection, but clerics and bards are the only ones who get resurrection. What? Look, death should mean something, and I don't mean the, oh, it should be grittier and harder and dead is dead. <laughs> No, what I'm saying is, it should be meaningful. There are epic tales of people descending into the underworld to rescue those that have passed, trials and tribulations that needed to be overcome. And also, as far as the magic in the system and all that, resurrection has such a small cost as to seem ridiculous. To make a golem, a golem, requires you to find a special rare manual, use a bare minimum of 50,000 gold worth of materials, spend one to four months working and studying every day for 16 hours, and then once you finish the golem, the book is destroyed to make a golem. It takes 100 times more gold and 19 
1,500 times longer to make an iron golem than to defy the laws of life and death, which only require you to run down to the jewelry store and spend an hour mumbling to yourself. Yes, I keep bringing up the diamonds, and yes, I'm aware that a DM could just say, there are no diamonds available if they want to make it harder to achieve. Okay, first, part of my problem is that a diamond is such a boring cost for what should be a huge deal, one of the hugest deals. Imagine if you watched a movie and some evil cult was trying to bring back their Dark Lord and they were like, To resurrect the Dark Lord, we will need a diamond. That's all. Thumbs down. Bad movie. But second, a DM having to artificially go, uh, no diamonds here, sorry, feels kind of bad for the player because they wasted one of their precious few high-level spells to learn a spell they're suddenly not allowed to cast if the DM doesn't want them to. These spells are not good. And I've seen enough people complain about it that I don't feel out of line saying that. But... This channel isn't here to complain about stuff, it's here to help make TTRPGs better. I don't think we should get rid of resurrection in D&D. Resurrection in a magical world is a cool concept and it should be there. I just think that we should make these spells feel better if they're not working for your game setting. So let's fix the resurrection spells. And hey, these are just my ideas. They might not be perfect, but even if you don't like them, I hope they inspire you to think up your own. All right, first, like I said, I think Revivify isn't too bad, but it's low level and an action to undo death mid-battle. And the 300 gold diamond cost just, ugh. So instead, why not have the cost be the caster losing all but one of their HP? Then casting it while the fight is still going on is kind of a big risk. And if that feels too harsh for your game, maybe instead casting it immediately imposes a level of exhaustion for both the caster and the target. And if neither of those seems harsh enough, why not both? This is resurrection in six seconds. There should be a serious cost. There, fixed revivify. Ray's dead. Love the stuff with needing all the vital organs around. The diamonds, ugh. What is this obsession with diamonds? No, make it 500 gold of something more interesting, something related to resurrection. But on top of that cost, have the caster and the target both gain five levels of exhaustion. You wanna bring your rotting friend back? Then get ready to pay for it. Or I guess you could make them have a constitution check to reduce the levels of exhaustion if you want to possibly be able to avoid five levels of it. But this is necromancy, something that apparently all clerics, paladins, and bards are okay with, but I feel like it should be taxing to life forces in general. And you want it to be harsher than just some exhaustion? Have the target lose one point from an attribute of their choosing. Want it to be even harsher? Have them lose one attribute point for every day they were dead. Really puts a ticking clock on that 10 day time limit, huh? Fixed. Reincarnation. No more reincarnation. I hate it. <laughs> what? I can't just get rid of, uh, fine. All right, let's really rework this one then. The soul of the target dead player is implanted into another willing target. That player goes through a rapid weird birth process over the course of two days. It can be a man or a woman. It grows like a cyst. Yeah, magic is gross sometimes. Deal with it. Then they give birth to the reincarnated form of the formerly dead target, who is now the race of the parent. Both the parent and child have four levels of exhaustion. The reincarnated child version rapidly grows over the course of the next four days, regaining their memories and levels, quickly reaching the age when they died. There. Consequences and a change of race that actually lines up with the idea of reincarnation in some way that isn't completely and pointlessly random. And hey, it's even narratively way more fun. Fixed. Resurrection and true resurrection. They are no longer spells tied to a class. 
They are rituals that require a manual, just like golems. Yep, mentioned those for a reason. And clerics and druids and ugh, bards, before you jump down my throat saying that I'm taking away some of your most powerful spells. I am not trying to rob you. I'm trying to help you. I am giving you the freedom to actually get to take a different high-level spell instead of feeling required to take these. You can now learn a different awesome spell that you'll actually get to utilize a lot more often and not feel guilty for refusing to be the party's backup plan. Anyway, what should the ritual involve? Not diamonds! Now keep the gold cost, but put that money towards something more fitting. Special goats to sacrifice or something. I don't care. Make it something that fits into your game's setting. Next, it should take longer than a friggin' hour to put together, at least a day, and it should involve a greater cost. Now, if you want to keep it simple and you like punishment, have the resurrected player lose a total of four points from the attribute or attributes of their choosing, and then there are four more stat points that can be taken from any number of the players contributing to the ritual. Four people means each person loses one. Yeah, it's kinda harsh, losing attribute points forever sucks, being dead sucks more. Another alternative is once the player is resurrected, avatars of death, brought about like from the deck of many things, show up, same rules as the deck. One avatar for each person who wants to fight. That person is supposed to be dead and they're here to put them back. Or if you want, maybe the dead person went to hell and devils come to take them back. I don't care. But this makes getting them back a bit of a mini-adventure, without insisting that the whole party has to travel to some forgotten gate and down into the depths of Tartarus and you get so far off track from the main adventure that it derails the whole campaign. Oh, uh, true resurrection. Uh, that should be a ritual that does require special hard-to-find ingredients and does require some grand adventure that takes time. But you gotta find some uh, angel's tears from the weeping tree atop Mount Who Gives a Fart. In return, no loss of attributes or death avatars to fight. You're welcome. There you go, I fixed resurrection. Uh, maybe, assuming it's even broken in your game. Maybe you hate my ideas and you like resurrection to be more gamified like it is. And I don't mean that as a bad thing. Having death be kind of a revolving door for folks with money in your world could actually be a super interesting concept that you could really dig into. Or maybe casters capable of that level of magic are so rare in your world that these rules make sense. I mean, with how overpowered D&D characters get after level 10, it does make a sort of sense. I just think that even for really powerful characters like that, it's a lot more fun for Resurrection to be more challenging and narratively satisfying than just being a begrudging purchase at Rocks R Us. And hey, maybe you have your own interesting rules for Resurrection. I know Matt Mercer has some rules to make Resurrection have the potential to fail and involve more people. From what I remember of it, it isn't a bad fix for some of my issues with Resurrection. And I'm sure other folks out there have even better ideas. All I'm saying is that you don't have to be stuck with raw resurrection if you don't want. You can make it better. I don't know if this video was helpful or if people are even as frustrated with resurrection as I am. Who knows? Tell me in the comments. After that, maybe check out my Patreon. I've been posting maps and stuff from a new adventure module I'm working on, so that's fun. You can also request me as a GM in Start Playing. I'll run Cortex Prime, Fate, Cypher System, yes, even D&D. &D. And if you're a patron, you get a discount. Otherwise, I'm working hard on the How to Play Powered by the Apocalypse video and some tutorial-focused one-shots for Cortex Prime, both of which should be out this month. I'm also looking at streaming TTRPG stuff on Twitch in the mornings and afternoons, so you should probably follow me there. Maybe I'll stream it here to YouTube as well, but I don't I don't want to clutter up the channel too much. I, I don't know. If you want streams here, let me know. Um, it's super hot in my recording booth. I'm so tired. I've been recording for too long. But hey, if you're still watching the video, thanks for sticking around. I don't know, I, I don't have anything more interesting to say. Um, maybe next time we'll tackle the other worst spell. Everything that bards. <laughs>